again, folks. I am here again with uh, Brandon Delvo, and Brandon is our communications guru for uh, for the college I work at in uh, North Dakota, the northwestern tip of North Dakota, not far from uh, Montana, not far from the Canadian uh, international border. And he is gonna he helped me out understand uh, basically communications as in he gave me an introductory class, and now he's gonna walk the middle-aged curmudgeon that I am through the use of the various media to get the message. Because the most important thing is not the medium, but it's the message that we're trying to communicate. Am I right on uh, that front, uh, Brandon? Yep, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of different mediums that are out there to really help uh, get our message out to the public. So, So we hear a lot about, you know, why aren't you on TikTok? Why don't you do Instagram or Snapchat or, you know, whatever the next big thing is in the Facebook? And each time you do those things, it's going to require more and more hours. And there's only one of you. And, you know, learning new technologies isn't necessarily the easiest thing. And formatting for new technology and, and various technologies isn't easy. So what has been your recipe and how have you... um what have you thought about all of this? Because again, you worked uh, uh, for quite a bit of your uh, career with the one-on-one -on -one of educating a legislator or listening to a farmer and advocating for her, his or her uh, needs. So tell me about the college and how do you reach larger audiences in a huge geographic area? Because we our service area is 53 counties in, in North Dakota and Montana. And we're talking about very large surface area. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Montana is what, roughly about 700 miles in, in distance. And we, uh, one part of our area is roughly pretty much half of the state of Montana. And then on top of it, half of the state of uh, North Dakota. So Western North Dakota, really from Bismarck all the way up north to Canada, and then uh, over into Montana, uh, basically going from a uh, small town like Haver, all the way down into Billings and Red Lodge, down towards the Beartooth Mountains. So, yeah, we have we cover a really really wide area. Um, once again, as kind of a one man uh, uh, marketing team, um, I did have the privilege uh, last year. I had a. Uh, uh, two uh, recruiters and outreach specialists that were underneath me. And we kind of got to open up some more mediums of how we get out our message to the public. Um, but I, I kind of will just break down here a few of the things that we do. So there is some of our traditional media, um, which might be, you know, things like press releases, um, maybe uh, radio advertisements, and then obviously uh, things in print. So in your newspapers, um, here in Williston, the, the newspaper runs, uh, like on uh, Sundays, uh, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we, we we have three three times a week here in town. And then a lot of our smaller towns run weekly editions. So they might usually come out like between a Wednesday or a Thursday, um, which gives us a little bit of time uh, to, to get some of that um, when you're trying to get something in um, to like the newspaper here in town. Timing is a little more important. Um, right. If you're you know, trying to really go for maybe a, a bigger story or kind of getting more of that, 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 that communications punch, if you will, to just really, really saturate it and, and get it out there in print. I usually try to go for a Friday, which um, the old po political term used to be, you know, Fridays were, were uh, take out the trash day where you might just put little lesser stories out there where, you know, it's an old West uh, show, the West Wing adage you know, that those little small human interest stories will go out. But I find Fridays sometimes to be more effective because it makes the Sunday edition. And in, on a Sunday morning, folks maybe have more time to sit down with their cup of coffee and actually look at the paper. Um, a lot of times during the work week, you know, they're maybe looking at the e-edition that gets sent to their email box. They scan it maybe their first hour in the office and they go about their day. Um, and sometimes they forget about it. So, I mean... That that's just a little more on the traditional side. Um, we do things with our local radio station here. Uh, town We have a 660 uh, KEYZ or Keys Country um, and 96.1 FM uh, Dakota Country. And we go in twice a month um, and we have a segment called Teton Tuesday. Uh, we're obviously the Wilson State College Tetons. So, um, and that's just really a very informal 
uh, interview that we do between the FM and AM station. And I might bring in, you know, Dr. Herning to maybe uh, here on Tuesday, he talked about just a recap on the ribbon cutting. Um, and we also had Giving Day today, which our foundation does to help raise money for our, a lot of our programs. Um, he came and, and uh, sat with, with our uh, president, Dr. Herning, to to talk about Giving Day. So we have a lot of those informal interviews, which which are really good. And that goes back to building trust um, with our community and just really kind of opening up the doors to have more of an in-depth conversation with those people beyond just those press releases and those uh, uh, print uh, articles that get put in the paper. Um, now, Williston is a little bit different as compared to maybe other parts of the country where, you know, you're using a lot of different mediums to, you know, social media mediums, I should say, to get your message out. Uh, Williston is very Facebook heavy. Um, and, and I mean that where, um, I mean, it, each social media platform has its, has its advantages and its disadvantages. Um, Williston uses Facebook really as a really good medium. Um, and I'm not saying that just on the student end of things, I'm saying that more on, you know, the parents, grandparents, uh, extended family, you use a lot of Facebook, obviously, you know, sharing pictures, putting up, uh, posts or whatever. But when it comes to our communication side and how that relates to Facebook, I think a lot of that, um, they use it almost like a like the old uh, yellow pages. It's a directory form. Oh, really? It's a way to find out about community events um, and, and different things going on in town. So um, I've always found that fascinating. Um, but we do use Instagram and Instagram is a lot more maybe for our students. Um, you know, kind of that demographic is a little more maybe um, of our student demographic, more of our traditional base type student between, you know, 17 and 24. Um, age range, but that's, you know, what we use a little bit to put on there um, is it maybe a little different than what we might put on Facebook sometimes. And then when I, uh, earlier I mentioned I had two recruiters, we did get into TikTok for a period of time um, before some restrictions were put on that platform um, uh, based off the higher, uh, State Board of Higher Ed, um, kind of set some mandates down on how we use that platform. So it's been a little more difficult to to use that. Um and then we, we also have had Snapchat and really, if we're going to brand and get things out to our students, we try to use that. Um, but I mean, once again, as a one man show, um, it is harder for me to get on all those various platforms at one time. So if, if a consumer or a listener was, was, was to look at that, you would probably go, Hey, if you haven't been on that since the summer, well, just a reminder, I mean, I'm, a, I'm kind of a one man show, so it's, it is a little harder, but I'm hoping with uh, getting some new recruiters on board, we can we can kind of get those things resurrected. That's the nice thing about some of these things. They can lay dormant and all you got to do is just start putting material back on them again. And it's like, you never left, you know, it's just welcome back to the party and let's just let the good times roll and let's get the message out there. I, 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 I like, I like how you described it, uh, laying dormant and then you revive it. Now you, you talked about uh, Facebook. I, I did notice that, um, you know, toward the end of the summer when I joined, you were putting out a message in the community uh, about uh, those registration days and uh, people were walking in. So, so our traditional student in our enrollment was here and, uh, you know, you put, uh, including last minute, uh, new days. And people were responding and walking in and they lifted us to, uh, you know, rather than having a uh, downward slope to parity with the prior year. So if you don't mind, talk to me about your strategy of how you deploy that message. What kind of a message do you put out and how do you reinforce it so people don't just see it and go, oh, geez, I'll do it a different day but actually get themselves because you gave, to, you said, get the person to the door. So how do you do it within, within that uh, approach? Yeah. So in regards to like our registration days, um, knowing that, you know, it's very competitive to get students to the door nowadays. Um, it's obviously an employees type market out there. A lot of that is, has shown, you know, kind of post uh, pandemic and everything. And just the fact of where we are economically, where we are in the country, like we said, with, with egg and oil really being, you know, big uh, economical bases up here, um, knowing that, 
the, some of those, those kids right out of high school can go get, you know, jobs that, I mean, pay three, four times more in salary than other parts of the country. Um, knowing that our registration days are kind of the key to the summer. Um, some folks think schools, you know, kind of go quiet and dark during the summer. That's really not, not anything that we do over on the higher ed side. I mean, we're obviously getting, getting students into the door, getting them signed up for, for fall. Um, and really my biggest thing I wanted to do, uh, for this past summer, when we were looking at it really after graduation was just repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, we had our days down for our registration days. We knew, we knew when they were going to be. And a lot of that was just sitting down and just kind of doing really a, a blitz type campaign of just, we need to hit all our avenues here. We need to, um, first off, you know, get, get, get that press release out there, um, get all those dates out there. Um, get that, get that posted up on our website. And then really in every registration day, um, that, that article was listed. So people could go back to that and reference that, um, if they needed more information by chance. Um, but then really the other thing of it too, was just incentives. Um, you know, what is going to be that incentive to maybe want to get that student into the door? Um, one incentive we did, we did a drawing after each registration day, um, for like a hundred dollar gift card to use in our bookstore. So we're supporting our bookstore that they're, they're getting what the tools they need, right, right under our roof. Um, but then just reminding folks again and again, tweaking the message a little bit like on social media, but, you know, keeping the information the same, these are going to be, you know, the four main points or five main points of why is registration day right now so important in the middle of June or July why am I worrying about school now when it's not till the end of August? And my main message I hit on on radio, radio ads, everything else was peace of mind. Get it done now so you don't have to worry about it a week before school starts when you're scrambling for everything. Um, and I think that really that really hit home. Um, we incrementally saw our appointment numbers go up. But then at the same time, the amount of walk-ins we were getting was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, I always like to jokingly say we never like to commit to anything up here in the upper Midwest or we do it at the last minute. And I mean, incrementally seeing those numbers go up, um, you know, was maybe the, the parents saying, hey, Johnny, Sally, did you did you go register? No, nope, no, nope, I didn't do it. You know, oh, it's the last registration day in you know, August. OK, I'll do it. Um, but really a success based off of some of that was we added two extra registration days really in the middle of our in-service week when a lot of our faculty are on campus. Um, but I think that also was a, was a good way to show our faculty, you know, what we've been going through and, and what we do in the summer. Um, but really, I mean, another layer that we used to get out was um, we did some short videos with some of our admissions people, um, really to kind of put a face and a name out there of, you know, this you're going to see this person here. They might help you maybe with financial aid. They might help you with your admissions process. Um, and that helps just to build trust. And it's always nice to, to put a name and a face when you walk through that door of, oh, hey, I might have seen you on this video. OK, I feel maybe a little more comfortable. I'm not as apprehensive or shy about going through this process. And I think I think that really, really helped. Um, but just repetition, 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 being consistent, um, sitting down and really planning it out. The nice thing about social media platforms and some other things uh, like Facebook, for example, you can get on the meta business suite and you have a, a planner in there. It's just like a calendar and you can plan all your social media posts out. So um, I can plan a month's worth of posts um, for, for a certain thing. And unless something changes where I got to go into it, you can put what time you want it to go on, what day of the week. And you can essentially just kind of, you know, go about your day. So you're not having to go, oh, I forgot to post up right. something for registration day. Um, but, you know, we still had to post our winners. We like to get our winners out there because a lot of times parents or aunts, uncles see it and they end up tagging the student, you know, and then other family members see, oh, hey, you know, our, our student won a hundred dollar gift card. And maybe another family sees that where, you know, it's another reminder to, hey, so-and-so just won a hundred dollar gift card. Have you got signed up? You know, they're going to school here. Um, and word of mouth. I mean, word of mouth is important too. Uh an old adage I like to use up here is always of the 
uh, the two farmers talking on the, on the road, you know, one truck's facing one way and one's kind of facing the other way. And they're sitting there talking word of mouth is a big, powerful thing up here. And through using some of those mediums, I think it's, I think it's uh, really, really successful. That was a wonderful learning opportunity for me. Brandon, thank you for joining me for the second time when Chris bailed out on me. Uh, this is <laughs> Let's Talk Ed uh, with Brandon Delvo uh, talking about communication and how uh, uh, and how he uses the various tools of communication and the, the, the thought process that he goes through uh, to advertise, but also to communicate the message of the empowerment through education. Uh, this is Let's Talk Ed. Join us whether on YouTube or through our podcasts.